Good morning, Ms. Jordan. I'm Dr. Rosenblatt. I heard you were referred by your primary care physician, Dr. Edmonds. Tell me what's been going on. Well, I seem to go to the bathroom all the time, all day long, and if I don't get to the bathroom in time, I might have an accident. How long has this been going on for? It seems like it's been pretty bad for the past few months, but I've actually been noticing it getting worse over the past few years. So how often are you going to the bathroom? I don't really know, but it seems like I must be going at least every hour or every other hour during the day, and a few times I leak. So I would imagine this is interfering with your activities. Oh, it is. I'm 72 years old, but very active. I exercise at the gym several times a week, and I like to spend time with my grandchildren, but it's getting to the point where I'm afraid not to be near a bathroom. Do you wear pads? Yes. How, how many do you wear in a day? I must wear three or four pads a day, sometimes more, and they're not cheap. No, I, I know. It's awful, but I, I just don't have a choice. Well, I think I can help you with this problem. The leakage may not stop completely, but we should be able to reduce the number of times that you leak each day. That would be wonderful. It's not only the wetness, but I'm afraid that I smell like urine around my family. And to tell you the truth, I don't even want to leave my house anymore. It's awful. Let me ask you a few more questions before we do an exam. You already told me about the urgency and the frequency of your trips to the bathroom to urinate and that we will leak urine if you don't get to the bathroom on time. I see on your questionnaire, you also mentioned that you were getting up two to three times at night to go to the bathroom. Yes, the, the urge wakes me up in the middle of the night and sometimes I don't make it to the bathroom. I can feel it dripping out before I reach the toilet. And it doesn't appear that you leak with coughing or sneezing or exercising? No, not really. If I empty my bladder before I exercise, I can usually get through an exercise class without having an accident. And I don't think I leak with coughing or sneezing. Actually, I had that for a while after my last child was born, but that seemed to get better on its own. Have you ever seen any blood in the urine, or do you get a lot of bladder infections? No, I, I've only had one or two bladder infections in my life. Great. Do you feel like you're able to empty your bladder when you go to the bathroom? Yes, that doesn't seem to be a problem. According to the bladder ultrasound the medical assistant did when she first brought you into the room, it looks like you have very little urine left over in the bladder. Well, I had just used the bathroom. Is that okay? Yes, we, we did that on purpose. We want to make sure that you're emptying your bladder well when you go to the bathroom, and that bladder ultrasound confirmed that for us. Oh, okay, I understand. Do you have any sensation of pelvic pressure or bulging in the vaginal area? No, why? What would that mean? Some women with this condition, which we call overactive bladder, also have prolapse of the pelvic organs, like the bladder or the uterus. You mean like a drop bladder? Yes, exactly. My sister had a hysterectomy for that, but I haven't felt anything like that. Good, that's fine. So are you a coffee or a tea drinker? Well, I like to have a few cups of coffee in the morning and maybe a tea in the afternoon or evening. Is that regular coffee? Yes, I really need that caffeine boost to get me started. You're not going to take away my morning coffee, are you, doctor? Well, we'll need to discuss that. Some women are sensitive to the caffeine, which is a diuretic, which means it makes your kidneys make more urine. I have noticed that I do go to the bathroom more often after I drink coffee. I also go to the toilet a lot after I take my fluid pill for my high blood pressure. And when do you take that fluid pill? Uh, usually I take it in the evening around dinner time. That might be contributing to how often you're getting up to go to the bathroom at night. So should I take that fluid pill earlier? I, I think that would be a good idea. So I'll speak with your primary care physician and make sure she's okay with that change. Okay. I know she's also concerned with me getting up in the middle of the night so often. Well, frankly, there, there may be a higher risk of having falls and fractures among women with overactive bladder. So I'm sure she'll be on board with the plan. Uh, that's what she told me. She's concerned about me walking around in the middle of the night and rushing to the bathroom. So do you know how to do Kegel exercises? I've heard of them, but no, I really don't know what they are. That's fine. A lot of women don't know how to do the exercises. It's something that we recommend that involves squeezing your pelvic floor muscles, the same muscle you'd contract if you were trying to stop urinating or, or holding back gas. I can evaluate your ability to do the exercises properly when we do the examination. How often should I do those exercises? Well, we recommend that you perform four sets of exercises each day. So each set 
consists of squeezing your pelvic floor muscles for a count of five, then relaxing for a count of five, then squeezing and relaxing, repeating this 10 times. So four sets of those exercises every day. And that should help with my bladder control? Yes, as well as some other treatments, but we'll speak about that later. Let's go ahead and do an exam, and then we can discuss the next steps. Why don't you get changed from the waist down, and I'll be back with my nurse in a few minutes. Okay. Well, your exam is very normal. There's no prolapse of the pelvic organs. You have a very good Kegel exercise squeeze. So, doctor, then why do I have this overactive bladder problem? It's hard to say. There, there are so many factors that may be involved, including age and menopause, childbirth injuries, neurologic problems, and other issues. Wait, do you think I have a neurologic problem? No. We know that women with problems like multiple sclerosis or Parkinson's or strokes are certainly at risk of having overactive bladder, but most women with overactive bladder do not have neurologic problems. It's just one of the things we look for when we evaluate women with overactive bladder. Oh, so that explains why you were doing some nerve testing during the exam. Yes, I was looking for any evidence of a neurologic problem, but that part of the exam was completely normal. Well, that's good, but what's wrong with my bladder? Well, the bladder normally contracts or squeezes when you go to the bathroom. After all, the bladder is a muscle and muscles are supposed to contract, but it seems that for whatever reason, your bladder is contracting when it's not supposed to and that's giving you symptoms of urgency and urgent continence. So what else can be done about it? I, I see a lot of the commercials on TV for medications for overactive bladder. What do you think about medications? I'm already taking so many pills. Well, we can start with what we call behavioral changes, which include the Kegel exercises that we discussed earlier and reduction of caffeine, which we also discussed. All right, I'd be willing to try and cut down on my caffeine intake if it'll help with the problem. Great. I'd also like you to fill out this bladder diary. Bladder diary? Yes, for a 24 hour period, I'd like you to keep track of your voids, writing down the times that you urinate and how much comes out. So how do I do that? Well, I'm gonna give you a collection device that you put under the toilet seat. It has markings so you can measure how much you urinate. After you write it down in the diary, just dump the urine in the toilet. I'd also like you to keep track of how much and what you are drinking during that period and also write down if you and when you experience a leak. Okay. You can mail the diary back to me when you complete it. So why do you want me to do this diary? Well, for several reasons. First, it will give me a better idea of how bad your problem is, but also it can help me design a plan for something called bladder retraining, where we get you on a specific schedule of voiding. And finally, it may help us with managing your fluids better so you don't get up as often in the middle of the night. There's a lot to think about here. Yes, there is. So I've summarized what we've spoken about on this page. Oh, okay, that's good. So just to review, here's what we've discussed in terms of management of the overactive bladder so far. Kegel exercises, reduction of caffeine, complete the voiding diary and send it to my office, and then discussing changing the time that you take your fluid pill. Got it. Let's make a follow-up appointment in four to six weeks to see how you're doing, and we can review your voiding diary at that time. Okay, that sounds like a plan. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure.